Hikers. I'm Catherine with Minerva and today I'm going to show you how to stitch up the Zephyr dress from Deer and Doe. Let's get to it! Now the Zephyr dress is a knit skater dress and it comes with three versions. You have a crew neck version which goes up a little bit higher. We have a v-neck version which is the one that I decided to do. And finally we have view C which is a two-piece skirt and crop top version. Now, we do have kits available through Minerva here with a number of different fabrics and absolutely everything that you need to complete your Zephyr dress along with matching thread and needles. So grab the kit that you like best and let's get to cutting out this pattern. Okay, so we're going to start by prepping our fabric and pattern. So we have a printed paper pattern here and it's on nice thick paper, which I love. I'm going to use my tracing paper to trace out the size that I want to stitch up based on the size charts here. And bear in mind, there is negative E since this is a knit dress and has some stretch. So I am just transferring all of those markings and then I am going to wash and dry my fabric and then begin to cut it out, which I have done here. So I'm just placing my template on here and I like to use my rotary cutter and mat to cut everything out. And don't forget to clip those notches in there. Now for the bodice. Now the bodice has princess seams here uh, on both the back and the front. This is the back of the v-neck dress and I'm just going to place the two princess seamed bodice pieces to the center back. I'm using clips because it's easier than pins when working with knit fabrics. And I'm just going to go in here with that and then I am going to stitch them using my seam allowance going all the way down. I'm going to use a jersey needle and the matching thread here. Don't forget to back stitch. Now in this instance, even though it's a stretch, I used a straight stitch. If you're worried about it, you could use a very slight zigzag or narrow zigzag stitch. Next, I am going to push my fabric towards the center back of this panel here. So you notice I did not overlock or serge the edges, and that is because we are going to do another step here. Now this step is optional, but I really like the look that it gives to this dress here. And the next step is we are actually going to top stitch this. So I've pressed them both towards the center back, and then we're going to top stitch going down. There's a couple of ways you can do it. So, so we have the twin needle method, which is the first one here. The second one here, I am using my cover stitch machine to do that. And then the third version is to use a decorative stitch on your regular sewing machine. So I'm using my cover stitch machine. I know not everyone has that, but the twin needle gives a very similar result. Next, we are going to stitch up the bodice for the front. So we're going to match those notches on the princess seam. And that notch is actually should lie at that apex of your bust point. Um, typically when pattern makers put notches in that area, it's, it's tend to be the highest bust point or that bust point within that area. So match that up with right sides together and stitch it just as you did the back panel here. So once we have that stitched, you guessed it, we are going to press it. Now you can also use a pressing ham to get it, but I found that this wasn't a very highly curved seam and it didn't really need the ham to get a nice good press on that. So once again, we're going to press it towards center front and top stitch that however you like here. Okay, so here is the back. And here's the front. We are going to attach them along the shoulder seams here. So just use your clips and clip them in place. You probably only need two clips per side since it is a narrow shoulder seam here. And then go ahead and stitch that. And so you can see I've stitched it and I have not overlocked it. You could overlock it if you weren't going to do any of the top stitching, but if you want that decorative top stitching, it makes it a little bit easier and less bulky if you don't overlock it. So I am going and I am pressing my seam towards the back. Now we're going to attach the skirt. So with this portion, we are going to take our circle skirt here and we are going to match up either side as well as the center front or center back. In this case, it's center front since the V-neck here. And we are just going to stitch it in place. 
Now there's no decorative stitching going on on here. So when you do stitch this across, you can finish the seams with either a zigzag or that overlocker and serge those edges just to give some nice elasticity to that because this is an area that is going to stretch. It's over our waist and we really want to make sure that we have a little bit of stretch in that stitch that we're using here. So we're going to do that on both the front and the back of our dress here. And once it's done, stitch that right on up nice and simple with just a gentle curve here. So you can see that is complete and this is what it looks like. And you can go ahead and give your seams a nice good press. Now, if you wanted, you could also top stitch this using that twin needle as well. I am pressing it up towards the bodice on this instance. Next is the side seams. So I went ahead and I actually used my cover stitch to give a decorative stitch here. You don't have to, uh, but I thought it looked nice and maintained that same consistency. To do the side seams, I like to match up the waistline first and then go to the top as well as matching any notches and the bottom and then distributing any of those clips in between. It helps everything lay nice and flat. Do this on both sides so you can save a bit of time when you head on over to that sewing machine to get everything all stitched up. And with this one, it's really nice because it is not lined, uh, super simple. And oftentimes knit dresses are pretty quick to come together, which is always quite lovely. So stitch that up. And this is another instance because there's no top stitching, you can go ahead and you can serge those edges or zigzag that so that it's nice and finished. Bear in mind, knits are not going to fray. You don't have to finish them. It's just a little extra security with your stitches to add additional durability. So step number five is the hem. So I went ahead and I overlocked the bottom hem here. I just find it easier when I use the overlocker. And then I am using this quilting ruler, but you can use a seam gauge. It's probably a little bit more proper than the quilting ruler I have to mark out where my hem is. And then I'm going to fold it up. You can also use a hot ruler to do this. I just want to show you a couple of different methods here. And with this, because the knit doesn't hold the press quite that well, I am clipping as I am going. So you can see I put a de decent amount of steam and then I'll go ahead and clip that hem in place and that so nothing moves. So I have everything all nicely positioned in here. And once that is all done, you can go ahead and top stitch your hem. You can use a twin needle, a zigzag stitch, or in my case, I used my cover stitch machine. So step number six, the arm side. And so with this, we've got some bands to finish the arms here. So we are going to place them right sides together and that short little end, we are going to stitch. Don't overlock this. We don't want any extra bulk because we want to be able to press this open so that we have the least amount of bulk within this as possible. So go ahead and do that on both sides and then flip the band so that it's wrong sides together. And then we're going to press this in half. These are really tiny little bands here, uh, but do your best to press those out nicely. It'll make the next step a little bit easier when you've got that base press in here, even though it doesn't hold the press too terribly well with a knit fabric compared to something like a cotton or a linen. So now that we have that, we are going to take the bands and we are going to put them in the arm side. I am just marking the halfway point on this. You could quarter it as well, but it's a small area. And honestly, I think you only need to do half. So the bottom is where that seam is. You don't want to see that seam on the top. So make sure you put it on the side seam going down. Your arm is going to cover that seam. And then at the very top of the arm side is where you're going to do the shoulder seam. And then you're just going to stretch that arm hole out and uh, just distribute the rest of that and honestly with mine I probably would have increased the length of my armband just slightly because there is a little bit of puckering you can't really tell when you're wearing but when it lays flat you can see there's just a wee bit of puckering in here which could be alleviated just by making it slightly larger on that end so that might be something you want to consider Next, I am taking my armband and I'm flipping it in. So it's acting more like a facing or a bias binding, if you will, even though it's not. And I am going to top stitch this in place with my cover stitch machine. You can use a twin needle or a zigzag as well. 
And so that is what it looks like. It's nice and clean from the outside. So number seven is we are going to do the neckline. And in my example, I am doing the V-neck because it is the most complicated. And we are just going to stitch along this little notch here that creates that V. And then in order to create some ease, we're going to snip right to that point, but not through it. So just like we did with the armband, we want to take that and we want to have it flat. So you're going to open up these pieces right along that V and you're going to place them wrong sides together. This is where we can start to clip this in place. And so we're going to clip it going all the way down. It just makes things a wee bit easier. You can also press it, um, but I found the clips to work just as well as the pressing of it. So I decided to skip the pressing and do the clips. Next on your pattern, you will notice that there is a dot. You're going to clip towards that dot. I know it's scary. You're clipping into that fabric, but don't worry. It's going to make your life so much easier here. We're going to line up the V neck right here, and we're going to match up those raw edges. And so we're just going to clip it right there, matching that up. And then we are going to continue to follow the clips all the way up, matching up any of the notches, center back, uh, and everything that you have on that facing for the V neck here on this dress. So once you have it sufficiently clipped in place and you're sure that nothing's going to move around, then you can go ahead and stitch it. So I stitched all the way around and you'll notice that I also went ahead and used my overlocker to just put that in place. So it lies nicely here. So the next thing we're going to do is top stitch this with either your twin needle or the cover stitch machine and make sure that that is lying downwards. So that's what it looks like when it is all completed here. And now for the reveal. There you have it. Our Zephyr dress is all completed. Now, if you have made this dress, do use our hashtag Deer and Doe Zephyr dress and hashtag Zephyr dress. And if you have used one of our kits, don't forget to use the hashtag for the kits, which I will leave down below so that we can see all of your wonderful makes. And if you're not already a part of our community here on Minerva, do create an account. It is completely free and it is a great space to share all of the wonderful makes that you sew or knit up. We would love to see what you have. And if you want to see more of my personal makes, I am at Sheer Stitchery here on Minerva and I will link my profile down below. Until next time, makers.